GameStop Car Extreme recently launched on Steam. The word game in the title seems to have disappeared. Presumably they want to rename it because GameStop Car never made any sense, but I'm probably going to keep calling it GameStop Car because that's been its name since 2011. This version started life as GameStop Car 2013 and it got a series of updates and it became extreme. I think they should get rid of that word as well, to be honest. But then it would just be called Stock Car. Uh, so that's not very good. It just needs a brand new name, really. So if you're looking for it on Steam, it's called Stock Car Extreme. So what is it? It's a simulator from Riza or Riza Studios, who are a Brazilian company, and so a lot of the content is based in Brazil, its main focus being the Brazilian stock car series. But they've added to that and there's actually a few tracks from around the world now. This particular version is based on the 2013 release and then it got a massive update and it's still getting updated. This is version 1.25 and what you're seeing here is a new piece of content, a new cart track in Italy and this is a new cart. This is a rental cart, a woefully underpowered engine but a surprising amount of fun. There appears to be an incident, yeah, someone going backwards. Typical rental cart driving, really. Well, that's enough of that. Let's show you uh, a better race. But first, this is how I normally set it up. Pick your resolution, anti-aliasing, no V-Sync. There's some difficulty presets. Veteran turns everything off apart from auto clutch, so I've turned that off as well. In the rules, I'm just increasing the number of AI drivers and reducing the race time a bit. The controls can be a bit confusing. They've provided a bunch of presets. I'm loading the T500 preset, which sorts the axes out, um, but then I'm just checking the other buttons because in Formula Truck, the shifters were the other way around. They seem to have fixed it on this one. And I'm just changing a few other things Make sure you have the boost button applied to something because the stock cars have a boost facility that you can use during a race. This steering wheel range setting is a bit confusing at the moment because it doesn't actually change the steering lock of the car. It only changes the visuals of the rotation. It's actually exactly the same as opening up the controller.ini file and changing this value here. But you still actually have to go into your controller settings and change the rotation manually. For most cars in the sim, you want it on 540 degrees of rotation. There's a few exceptions. Uh, I'm just changing that there. That's my normal settings for the force feedback. You also have to go into the garage on each car to change the steering lock manually. This is because it's set for the default 270 degrees of rotation. For example, the 540 degrees cars should be set around 22. I'll just go through these. I've put the correct rotation on each category here. Apparently this is being fixed in a future update. So you should be able to set your wheel at say 900 and the sim will be able to apply its own steering lock based on the car you select which would bring the title more up to date with how the modern sims are doing steering lock. Force feedback effects. I have it on low. Medium and above just adds more canned effects, so things like curb vibration, engine vibration. So low is actually the purest form of force feedback. The force feedback strength is wrong. It should be negative on a Logitech wheel, but on a Thrustmaster it should be positive. Then in controller 2, speed sensitivity should be at 0. The head movement is ridiculous. I have to turn it down quite a lot. In controller 3, I don't usually touch this, but if you want to adjust the pedal response, you might want to change something here. And then the display settings. They've pushed the engine quite far, so it can be a bit demanding at max, uh, so you may want to turn the shadows down a bit. If you don't want to mess about with the visual steering wheel settings, you can always just turn it off there.
And then the last thing I do is I open up the PLR file and I find the max frame rate setting and I change that to 120 just for a frame limiter because I'm not running VSync. This is a race using the other new car, the Metal Moro MR18. And this is a new track, Johannesburg Historic Circuit. All of the cars in GameStop Car are really fun to drive and this is no exception. And this track is, is really good fun as well. This race should show the AI quite well. Um, they're not perfect, but they, they give you a really solid race. It's, it's one of the most complete sims out there. Despite the fact that it doesn't look that modern, that texture there around the windshield is uh, quite unfortunate, for example. It's actually a very sophisticated sim, some of the best handling available. There's a big update on the way that will add things like wing flexing, uh, visual tyre flex and flat spotting. So it's, it's well worth a look.